So in this video, we're going to have a look at the sympathetic innervation to the head and neck. Now we have to think about, well, how does the sympathetic nervous system reach the structures of the head and neck? If you recall, the sympathetic nerves um, leave the central nervous system in the thoracolumbar area of the spinal cord. So here we have the central nervous system consisting of the brain and its two hemispheres, the brain stem, and then as it passes through the base of the skull, so here will be the foramen magnum, it continues as the spinal cord. The sympathetic outflow from the thoracolumbar portion of the spinal cord, which is between these two orange lines here, runs from the level of about T1, so the first thoracic segment, to L2. So all the sympathetic nerves that are going to leave the central nervous system and innervate every part of the body that the sympathetic nervous system innervates will arise from this portion of the spinal cord. So the cell bodies of the first sympathetic neuron to exit the central nervous system, let's draw it in here, will sit in the grey matter within the spinal cord, so in the lateral horn of the grey matter. It will then send its axon out of the central nervous system and this first sympathetic nerve, as it leaves the central nervous system, is known as the preganglionic sympathetic nerve. Now all the preganglionic sympathetic nerves will meet a second sympathetic nerve known as the postganglionic nerve. And where it meets this is in a structure known as the sympathetic chain. So the sympathetic chain is essentially a vertical chain of ganglia, paravertebral ganglia, because they're running down the side of the vertebral column. So these purple dots here are the paravertebral ganglia, which are arranged in a vertical chain known as the sympathetic chain. So that's the sympathetic chain. So the preganglionic sympathetic is going to run into the sympathetic chain. Now if this sympathetic outflow is destined for a structure that's um, reasonably level with where it's exited from the spinal cord, then it may synapse with the cell body of its postganglionic nerve at the point at which it enters into the sympathetic chain. So let's draw that in here. Okay, so two would be our postganglionic nerve. Now bear in mind that the sympathetics that are leaving in the level of the thorax are going to have to travel some way up this sympathetic chain to actually get two structures within the head and neck. So nerves that are, or sympathetic nerves that are going to innervate our head and neck structures, they enter into the sympathetic chain. But rather than synapsing at the first ganglion that they meet, the axon of this first or preganglionic nerve will instead run right the way up the sympathetic chain to reach a ganglion much higher up in the neck. So the top three ganglia of the sympathetic chain are cervical ganglia. And we have a superior, a middle and an inferior. So these here are, let's say, sympathetic uh, cervical ganglia. That just means these are ganglia that are um, either side of our cervical vertebrae. So we'd have one on this side, we'd also have one on the opposite side. So sympathetics destined for the head and neck will run from the thoracolumbar outflow, usually T1 or T2. The axon will pass into the sympathetic chain, but they won't synapse at this first ganglion. Instead, their axons will run up the sympathetic chain, so using it a little bit like a lift or an escalator, to reach a ganglion much higher up in the neck, one of the cervical ganglia. Just add one on there because there's three cervical ganglia. So if we take this sympathetic nerve, this preganglionic sympathetic nerve, and we'll just remove the um, end here. So rather than it synapsing in the 
dangling here, we're going to fold it up into the neck. So it's going to go up, spinal, uh, up the sympathetic chain, and it will synapse either in the superior, um, middle or inferior cervical ganglia. It's going to um, innervate structures in the head and neck. So we'll look specifically at the top of the cervical ganglia, the superior cervical ganglia. That's perhaps the most important one uh, to take note of. So your superior cervical ganglia. So within the superior cervical ganglia, we would find the cell body, because a ganglia, as you recall, is just collections of cell bodies outside the central nervous system. And we find our cell body of our postganglionic nerve. Okay, our postganglionic nerve. So we've gone from the thorax, from the thoracic segment of the spinal cord, and we've worked our way up into the neck by following the sympathetic chain. We've synapsed in the superior cervical ganglion to give rise to our postganglionic sympathetic nerve. And it's the root of this nerve um, that we're going to follow now in terms of the um, head and neck structures and how the sympathetics reach their target tissues. So we're still in the neck at this stage, and obviously this isn't entirely anatomically accurate. We're having to blow certain structures uh, up into uh, a much bigger representation for the purposes of uh, showing you what's happening here. So what I'm drawing here is, um, obviously we, we'll be in the neck here. We're still in the neck. So this bit here is just a, a zooming in on the, on the area of the neck. And here we have the um, common carotid artery, internal carotid artery, and our external carotid artery, which would give rise to a number of branches that innervate or supply blood to the, um, the face and, and the neck, etc. So if we look at this from another perspective on the, this uh, image just here, so here we can see the um, common carotid artery, its bifurcation into the internal carotid artery, which is going to run in through the base of the skull, <coughs> and the external carotid artery, which is giving its branches to the face and the scalp, etc. And if we look a little closer, we can see running up the length of the neck here are the cervical ganglia. So we've got our middle cervical ganglia and our superior cervical ganglia just there. And these are giving rise to postganglionic sympathetics, which are then forming a plexus around the internal and external carotid artery. So these yellow uh, nerves there are these postganglionic sympathetics. So if we add them to our diagram here, this is essentially postganglionic sympathetic nerves, which are um, forming this carotid plexus um, around these arteries to run um, and follow their route to then innervate various structures of the head and neck. So if we look at this a little bit more closely, so we're essentially um, zooming in towards the, the base of the skull, here's our internal carotid artery, that would be our external carotid. So our internal carotid artery will run through the base of the skull, through its carotid canal, it will run through the petrous bone, through the cavernous sinus, and then emerge at the top of the cavernous sinus. It will take with it this plexus of sympathetic nerves. So the sympathetic nerves are running through the carotid canal as well as through the side of the cavernous sinus. So if we look at it from another perspective, in this image at the uh, top right here, so here we have um, this venous plexus that would be within the cavernous sinus. So we've got one at either side. Here's the cella tersica with the pituitary gland in the middle. And obviously, what we have here is we've removed the walls of the cavernous sinus, which are essentially um, a layer of dura. And we're not seeing all the other structures that run through the cavernous sinus, like the cranial nerves and the internal carotid artery. But we'll add on the internal carotid artery. So the internal carotid artery will um, arise through uh, the internal carotid, uh, so the carotid canal, I'll just draw that on here. It will then run into the side of cavernous sinus and peep out through the top and a branch is then given that runs through the optic canal which is here 
that will run with the optic nerve and into the into the orbit. So carotid canal, internal carotid, sorry, will have run up through the base of the skull, through this carotid canal, it emerges here, and then it runs into the middle of the cavernous sinus and then peeps out at the top before giving off um, a, a branch known as the ophthalmic artery, which runs into the orbit. So around this internal carotid artery, we have these sympathetic nerves that are also following these arteries. Okay, so that's what I've tried to demonstrate here uh, in a much more simplistic form, and this is just looking at it from a, a slightly different perspective. So what happens um, if we draw on the ophthalmic branch here? So this is the ophthalmic artery coming off the internal carotid. You see it here coming off the internal carotid. And it will run through the optic canal into the orbit. So if I draw the eye here, looking from the side. And those sympathetic nerves are going to follow the ophthalmic artery through the optic canal and essentially reach um, smooth muscle in the eyelid and the smooth muscle of the iris. Now just a small point to make in terms of its um, final route to the target tissues of the um, smooth muscle of the eyelid and the smooth muscle of the iris, the dilator pupillae, is that although it's for its most part it's reached the orbit by hitchhiking onto the internal carotid and the ophthalmic artery, once it's inside the orbit, these sympathetic nerves are going to then follow very, very distal branches of the ocular motor nerve up to the eyelid, because we know the ocular motor nerve innervates the other main muscle of that eyelid, the levator palpebris superioris, and those that are attempting to reach the muscle of the iris will jump onto uh, very, very small distal branches of the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal. But the main thing to take away is that um, our sympathetics to the head and neck are for the most part hitchhiking onto blood vessels. Those that hitchhike onto the external carotid artery, so our external carotid artery, um, will reach uh, smooth muscle um, and sweat glands. So smooth muscle within the blood vessels, including obviously um, these branches here. So the sympathetics that are forming a plexus around the internal and external carotid artery will be innervating the smooth muscle in the walls of these vessel vessels. Um, but equally, uh, they'll eventually reach uh, sweat glands as well uh, through branches of the external carotid artery. Um, in terms of the face and the, and the scalp, etc. So that's uh, essentially how the sympathetic nervous system reaches some of the key structures of the head and neck.